I, I want to dive into Lori. Hi, Lori. Welcome <laughs> to the USWNT Hour. It's where I get to ask <laughs> Thanks you. Thanks for having me, everybody. 2010, United States plays Mexico at Mexico. It's the underdogs versus the heavyweights, the underdogs being Mexico and the heavyweights being the United States. Pia was the head coach at the time. Women's CONCACAF Championship semifinals. United States loses. You were there at the top of this hour. You mentioned playing in Mexico, that 2010 memory. It comes back to you. It's no joke. Why? Why does that give you those memories? Tell us about this day. Because <laughs> it was like the us. wildest memory outside of some <laughs> of the games that we played in that World Cup that we eventually qualified for, but almost didn't. So listen, here's the thing. Like we we went to those qualifiers. We stayed at a, um, we were in, they were in Cancun. We stayed at this resort. It was like, the best qualifiers turned into like the worst thing you could possibly imagine, right? It was during um, Halloween. We had celebrations. Like we, you know, we were steamrolling through these qualifiers and then we're playing Mexico. And this is where the tiniest details start to show up because typically the day before a game, you go see the stadium. Mm -hmm. Something happened with our the timing that, that we were allowed to go to the um, stadium to train. It didn't fit with our schedule, what the coaches wanted. So we opted not to, which was the wrong idea because anything can take place in these qualifiers. And this is this is in 2010, as you mentioned, where there was a huge gap. Merida, 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 let me get the name. I, think, I, know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Mariel Dominguez. Sorry. Yeah, Mariel I almost Dominguez. said Mary Bell, and that's not what. Mariel Dominguez ended up scoring one of the goals. Fantastic player, right? I think leads Mexico to this day in like yep. um, in goal scoring, right? Um, Veronica Perez ended up uh, Perez ended up scoring the game winner in that in that game. The and, open goal coming in the second minute. Yes, or I knew it was the first five. I couldn't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah. However, so. You know, as I mentioned, we don't go to we don't go to the stadium. We don't see what's like. Well, big mistake because we show up and this place is packed, <laughs> packed to the brim, and it was like a small, intimate stadium. So I would, let's say, I mean, somebody could look this up, Lucy. We probably could use you. Um, <laughs> but I think there's like fifteen thousand, right? But it was so loud and intimate because it was on top of one another. And you talk about like the twelfth player. This place was rocking, and the game plan was like get through the first ten minutes because you could you could feel the energy. And like we're here coming in with like a huge discrepancy, right? Like we're ranked number one at the time, probably similar to what Mexico's ranked now in the, in the high twenties, right? And we're tell our game plan is get through the first ten minutes because when we yeah. show up, you can feel like, uh, excuse my language on here, holy shit, what have we gotten ourselves into? This is no joke, right? This 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 place is fired up for this. And as you mentioned, they score the first five minutes. We're chasing the game. We do equalize, and then they like. Um, get a game winner not too long after that. Abby's head is busted open. She's getting staples yeah, in the middle of the game. Exactly. Like it was just, we could, and we could not get a hold of the game because Mexico was firing all cylinders. And that is where that's, they're firing all cylinders. They're fired up. They had the fans behind them. And so that's, those are the things I'm talking about in terms of gamesmanship that like can go either way. Like we were, were we playing our best soccer in that tournament? No. And we were all a little bit all over the place. And it was some, it was really eye opening experience for everybody. Cause we eventually did have to go play away in home matches versus Italy that, and we were able to get in. Right. And the rest is history and losing in the final against Japan. But these are the things that are like such close calls as again, the women's game continues to develop and players, right? Like understand what it takes. And that would have still been a time when Mexico would have been like bottling everything they had yeah. inside to say, we're not freaking out here either, but yeah. we have our fans behind us. So let's show up and give it all because actually we're supposed to lose this game according to what everybody's saying. Yeah. Right. So, and, and this is probably where that gap was, even though there are some really good games. And I would always say around that time, even like in the 20 leading up, we played them in the qualifiers, obviously Mexico um, leading up to the 2012 Olympics. And I thought there was vast amounts of time in that qualifying game that we ended up winning for the Olympics as well, that they were a better team than us. So um, in terms of moving the ball, in terms of savviness, in terms of tactical understanding, it was just athletically, we continue to steamroll teams. Right. And so when you can match that, um, and you can, you can have equalizers in other areas. 
then it becomes way more neutral ground. And that's where my thinking is, yes, do I still have like, again, as I was mentioning with the U S I'm like, hell yeah, I'm here for it. Same as um, Sandra is for Mexico. And I am here for Mexico too, because I agree with everything that she said, but like the level, the playing field has leveled so much that then when you start to at, like think about playing in Mexico in front of home fans, if they're going to show up, like we've seen w- with their club play and the eyes on it. Yeah. There's a ton of pressure, but there's also a ton of excitement and you know how to deal with that so much better. And so when that gap closes so much more, it's the littlest details in the games that could swing either way. And, um, and so, yeah, I think that that's why th- that makes this is like, this is going to be potentially one of the most exciting qualifiers we've seen. And also like we're talking 12 years ago, right? Like we yeah. almost didn't make the world cup. So there's a lot of different factors that, um, are going to be important. And and it's going to be about in my opinion the right mix if we're um with the US Women's National Team getting that mix right who you're playing might not be the best 11 out there yeah. because you're going to have to have a uh, s- some a core group that understands calmness, the ability to play vertical at times, the ability to press and like yeah. have some savviness that like I would say that I don't feel like we've seen from our U.S. Women's National Team in a while, mm-hmm. in a 90-minute span. So is, is that because of the youth and the different players coming in and, and and the changeover we're seeing right now? No, I don't think so. I think you've seen that with the veterans too, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's been moments where the veterans, I think it's our style of play. I think it's wanting to attack and get on the front foot. I don't fault any of that. I think that's awesome. And then I think it's also a mix of – it's really difficult if that's the style that you want to play, right? Then to be able to sometimes take your foot off what will feel like taking your foot off the accelerator and then find moments to be even more um, um, purposeful or that's not quite word, but like destructive in a different way. Right. Yes. So um, yeah, and, and that's how I view it right now. And and that has been an ongoing common theme, I think around the U S women's national team for even when I was playing, right? Like, yeah, completely. so and, and how do you continue to evolve? Right. And so, um, yeah. So, so Lori, for you, as someone who played in those 2010 games in Mexico, in that stadium, you had that experience. What's one piece of advice you would tell the U S national team today, those young players say it's the last roster that was called in with a lot of young, very few capped players heading down to Mexico Mexico to play against Mexico in this first round of the CONCACAF W championship. What advice do you give them? Yeah. One, I mean, it's like the same, like a lot, you hear a lot of time, one game at a time, really. And also do what you can to tune things out because there's going to be so much more dialogue because on the flip side too, that we actually haven't talked about is there is a good chance. And maybe Sandra will push back on this. I'd be curious about your thoughts, but there's also, there's also a chance that there might not be a ton of fans at all in some of the games, which presents a completely different, um, uh, situation, which we saw with our women's national team. I think that was a tough thing for the U S at the Olympics going from playing in front of a ton of fans prior because everything had opened back up for the most part, Mm -hmm. having energy, much like we, I spoke about, um, for Mexico in, in the final game that we lost, but then then go to Tokyo where it's completely silent. Yeah. Yeah. And you have no energy and then you feel flat. So there's a ton of different things that could switch it. And I I still think there's going to be a lot of fans and I think there'll be again, a lot of eyeballs, but you could be playing in front of like not many and not many that are like, so then the, the field feel. And then again, if you don't, we had, we played in some slow fields that were like, you want to play at a fast tempo. Do you want them to be watered? You want to go and the pitch and the atmosphere does not uh, match up with that. So how do you, how do you find um, the ability to get a result in those conditions? Right. No, I think that's a good point that you bring up too about, about the environment or about the facility coming into play. I mean, you mentioned the, the qualifier match that didn't happen too long ago on, on, with the men's side and in Azteca, no, like you said, just, Traffic around the stadium, COVID, a pan, an ongoing pandemic that people are still trying to navigate, you know, things like that coming into play in terms of, you know, butts in the actual seats. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, come game day, that could be a factor is as, as well. I mean, just 
going back and trying to like reach back into like my my memory bank i mean with the two teams in the monterrey region you know in their finals and the fans that they're able to draw you're talking 40 to 50k yep. on a liga mx feminil day you know uh and i'm i'm hopeful that for this type of match uh you know between us and mexico that that will be the the more largely attended game, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you maybe a match like you know Haiti and, and United States might not get that type of packed house. Again, we'll we'll see. We'll and we'll see how the team per performs out of that. Cause I know like we're we talk we've talked a lot about this national team and this current this very current pool of players at the moment and kind of the opposition that they've been going up against lately from you know let's just say September of last year to to now. And how they're being tested or their, uh, what they're being presented with on the pitch. And I know with these most recent friendlies against Uzbekistan, we were putting some things in front of, in front of us saying, well, you know, perhaps if they go up against this team and they're walking away with some low score lines, like one to zero or two to zero, that might be considered a bit of a disappointment mm -hmm. or a letdown, you know, when you're looking at uh, the opposition in, in front of you. So there are some things that are going to come into play for sure. I'm in agreement with you 100%. But my hope is at least for uh, some of these games, whether it's like a, a you know U.S. versus Mexico or like a Mexico versus Jamaica, that there will be uh, some good crowds out there. Yes. yes. Hoping for good crowds across the board. These CONCACAF W Championship is happening in July 4th through the 18th. We talked about NWSL players and their competition. Also, Katarina Macario scoring a brace with Lyon in the UEFA Women's Champions League and all about the CONCACAF W draw. Thank you guys so much for being here. Final thoughts? Anything else? Lori, you want to hit us with anything else? Maybe no, I, I said enough. I have <laughs> I said enough. <laughs> I love it. Sandra, final thoughts from you? CONCACAF Supremacy. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love we're it. In, we're literally all in this together. Yeah.